Hi, I'm Sony Artisan Patrick Murphy Racy. I'm here to tell you uh, about three video cameras that I really like and why you might want to buy one over the other. Uh, so it's kind of a comparison of these three. So of the three cameras, only the AX700 and the Z90V are 4K capable. This MC88 is not. It's, it's full HD capable, so it does 1080p. Um, and that's because it's designed for use in multi-camera uh, productions. And um, so that's, that's what that's about. Um, why the handle thing? Um, so the handles make it much easier for uh, low angle shooting. Um, if you're actually a pro, the handle is essential. Um, you'll also notice that there's no microphone on these. That's what this big, this is a holder for a microphone. So you just open this up and then you'd stick on uh, a mic like this and then you'd close the, the deal and then clamp it on and then you'd plug in the mic into um, the channel one or two. And now this would be capable. But I want to point out that these two cameras do not come with microphones. Um, so you have to buy your own mic and that's because they're pro level cameras. Sony doesn't know what mic you prefer. Um, I prefer the, the Sony mic. Uh, this is a um, ECM VG1, it's 200 bucks. And it's what it, it's a great basic mic uh, that doesn't cost a ton of money and it sounds really good. Uh, there's three different levels of ND you can pick. It does have uh, phase detect autofocus, which means the autofocus capability of the MC88 is virtually the same as the Z90V and the A7 AX700. So all these will do really great, like auto racing, bicycle racing. Uh, if you're going to shoot basketball, real herky jerky, quick movement. Um, this is going to be great. All these cameras are going to do really well with sports coverage, no problem. All these cameras have dual media slots. They all use um, SD cards, but there's an A and a B, and you can configure them to do uh, record the same content twice or at the same time, like the same content on both cards. Or you can configure it where it will go from one card and then it'll automatically switch from A to B when A fills up. So for long form video recording, these are great because without that two card capability, you really, it's too scary. Uh, because if you have to stop recording and then change a card, you've lost whatever the speaker said in that time. So these are really good for long form recording. All three of these cameras have an LENC jack. That's this little tiny button here. Each one of them has it, and it's very, very handy. This is a, um, a little thing that'll just plug in to a little receptacle on the side of the camera. And now you can use this on a tripod on the arm that you use to pan, and you can zoom in and out or start and stop recording. Very, very handy uh, to do this, because if you don't have this, you can't creep. Uh, most of the zooms on the camera, you can't creep real well, but on, with these separate LANC uh, controllers, these remotes, you can do this. And Sony makes these, and there's lots of aftermarket ones as well. So this is a huge advantage for production, because if you're going to have uh, like a church scene where you're doing streaming or something like that, or a big event or a wedding, you really want to have each person that has operation of a camera to have an LENC remote. Sony makes something called an MC500. MC stands for multi-camera 500. So basically the camera, it's a controller, a switcher that can record a show that you're doing and it can, it can switch up to nine different cameras. So you could actually have, you know, seven, eight, nine of these MC88s in a church, for instance, each one all wired into that MC500 con controller that Sony makes. Makes it like a real easy to mix and you can have one person at a console that's controlling nine cameras, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna kind of switch over here. I'm gonna talk about the Z90V now. The Z90V is a really, really high-end camera. Um, it has everything that the AX700 has, like 4K, um, but it adds something very important, um, and that is a uh, BNC connector. So this little connector here, this little chrome thing, this guy is really, really important because if you're running uh, HDMI cabling, you can only go about 40 or 50 feet. But with the BNC connector, you can run, I think, up to 400 feet. Somebody will correct me on that. But if you really are doing heavy production in a big facility, a big place, and you want to have your camera angles really far out, the Z90V is the way to go. Um, it's a very, very high-end camera. It has a, a what's called an RS sensor um, 
it has a, a, a really, really good sensor for low light, just like the AX700. Um, it can also shoot in 10-bit color, but only in full HD. So in 1080p, you can get 10-bit color out of this camera, uh, which is really cool. And that's, again, it's production-related. So this camera is going to be plugged in easily to, like, if you're a freelancer and you, have, you own your own uh, camera and you get hired to bring a camera and shoot with a, a group of people and you're all going to be connected together on a switcher, this is going to go right into the whole system. This one's not going to because it's not going to be really possible to use in production easily. One of the other things I really like about the Z90V, just like the AX700, it has the same pro camera menu look and settings. So if you're looking at an FX9 or an FX6 or an FX3, um, all your menus are going to be identical to these, all these, well, these three cameras. So once you learn, if you, if you pick up a Z90V and then a couple years later you want to get an FX6 and shoot full frame with interchangeable lenses, for instance, you're not going to have to learn a whole new menu system. It's all going to be in your head and it'll be very intuitive. So that's very, very handy. So who should buy these cameras? Um, if you love to shoot a lot of video of your kids, um, you know, the AX700 is going to be great. It's a great vacation camera. It doesn't weigh a ton. Um, you could put this into, you know, a, a small bag or a backpack with water and, you know, energy bars, whatever. This is just a, the form factor of the camera is what's really cool about it and the fact that it does incredible 4K video. Uh, with Sony's Kodak uh, XVAC. So this is a really good option for that. And um, uh, at $1,898, it's a little pricey, but what you're getting, you're getting S-Log, you're getting HLG, the ability to shoot video in HDR kind of mode. Um, you're getting the phase detect autofocus uh, that's great for action, uh, capturing action, fast-moving action. Um, it's just the form factor of it is what you're paying for, really. The MC88 is really a production camera that's going to be used with other cameras that are similar, but its limitation is going to be that full HD only, never going to be able to use 4K. So right now, like if your church or you're building your facility that you shoot in, if it has a switcher that's only capable of doing uh, 720, this is overkill. This is great. Um, but if your switcher is 1080, it's going to work perfectly with it. However, if they get a new switcher that's 4K capable in the future, this camera becomes obsolete because you can't include it in a 4K production. Now, how much 4K is really happening out there? Honestly, not that much. Um, but just remember, if you're using this as a one-off camera and you, you are not unable to do pans after the fact. So if you shoot in 4K, you can zoom in and then roll across um, and you can kind of cheat. So the production value of having 4K cameras, even if you're not doing 4K output, is still relevant. So it's something to think about. But the, on the good side, this thing is only $1,300, $1,298 for an MC88. And if you're trying to do us an inexpensive um, streaming system for a church or a business or school or whatever, having three of these cameras and a switcher would be a really inexpensive way to go. Finally, we're going to talk about Z90V. If you're looking to become a professional videographer, this is a really good entry-level way to do that. Um, you're going to be able to freelance with the SDI input. You're going to be able to work in a, in a, in a, in a studio environment with other non-Sony stuff, whatever. It's got the handle. You'll need to pick up a mic, of course, but it's really a great production solution. And... Um, I really like the fact that it has everything. It's got 4K, it's got LANC capability for the remote, um, pro audio with phantom power uh, on board. So no matter what microphone your audio person says, hey, I want you to use this mic, it's, the camera's going to provide power to that microphone, all that stuff. It's just a really great camera. It's a really good platform that doesn't cost a million dollars. Um, but the next level beyond the, the Z90V would be, in my opinion, an FX3, really an FX6, and go full frame. But now you have interchangeable lenses and your cost goes up substantially. But this is a really good package for someone that is a semi-pro or maybe a still photographer that's getting asked to do a lot of video projects by, by current clients. 
this would be a, a better way to go than anything else. Having the option for the XLR built in and the ability to mix it manually on the side of the camera is everything. It really makes a huge difference to be able to do all that uh, in camera. So I hope this video has been helpful. It's very confusing. If you don't know a lot about video, it's very confusing to figure out what to do. Um, so I made three separate videos today talking about three different groups of cameras and how they relate to one another. And I hope it's been helpful. Um, and uh, I'm Pat Murphy Racy, Sony Artisan of Imagery. Thanks so much for watching.